wars that go on all the time. We are, I like to think, a, if you will, spiritual storm home for humanists. So I'll ask Betsy to come up and share a related reading. We were actually going to rotate this out this year because it's been read many times, but I met Garrison Keeler at a, an event at the Free Library um, a couple of weeks ago and just wanted to do it one more time. You'll see why at the end. Um, after sixth grade, I left Sunnyvale and rode the bus in the late road beyond Gone High in town where Mr. Detman was principal, a man who looked as if wild dogs were after him and a giant icicle hung over his head. <laughs> Worry ate at Mr. Deppin. He yelled at us when we ran down the stairs, <laughs> believing we would fall and break our necks and die on the landing. He imagined pupils choking on food and wouldn't allow meat in the lunchroom unless it was ground up. He had his own winter fear, that a blizzard would sweep in and school buses be marooned on the roads and children perish. So in October, he announced that each pupil who lived in the country would be assigned a storm home in town. If a blizzard struck during school, uh, we'd go to our storm home. Mine was the Kolekels, an old couple who lived in a little green cottage by the lake. She kept a rock garden on the lakeside with terraces of al alsum, pansies, petunias, moss roses, rising to a statue of the Blessed Virgin seated in around her feet a bed of marigolds. It was a magical garden, perfectly arranged. The ivy on the trellis seemed to move up in formation. Platoons of asters and irises along the drive, and three cast iron deer grazed in front. It looked like the home of a kindly old couple that the children lost in the forest suddenly come upon in a clearing and know they are lucky to be in a story with a happy ending. That is how I felt about the Kalekos after I got their name on a slip of paper and walked by their house and inspected it. Though my family might have wondered about my assignment to a Catholic home had they known. We were suspicious of Catholics, enough to wonder if perhaps the Pope had ordered them to take in little Protestant children during blizzards and make them say the rosary for their suppers. But I imagine the Kolekos had personally chosen me as their storm child because they liked me. Her, they said, told Mr. Deppman, in the event of a blizzard, we want that girl with the freckles and the pigtails, the skinny one. No blizzard came during school hours that year. All the snowstorms were convenient evening or weekend ones, and I never got to stay with the Kolekos, but they were often in my thoughts and they grew in large in my imagination. My storm home. Blizzards aren't the only storms, and not the worst by any means. I could imagine worse things. If the worst should come, I could go to the Kalekos and knock on the door. Hello, I'd say. I'm your storm child. Oh, I know, she'd say. I was wondering when you'd come. Oh, it's so good to see you. Who would you like a hot chocolate with an oatmeal cookie? We'd sit at the table. Looks like the storm is going to last a while. Yes. Terrible storm. They say it's going to get worse before it stops. I just pray for anyone who's out in this. Yes. But we're so glad to have you. I can't tell you. Carl! Come down and see who's here. Is it the storm child? Yes, herself, in the flesh. Okay, when I spoke to um, Garrison Keeler, he's, he's thinking he's going to do more with this, like having the storm child actually um, uh, visit the home. <laughs> so hopefully we'll have another story. <laughs> Thank you, Betsy. I'm now uh, going to ask our guest musician, our violinist for today, Jeff Baker, to come up and share a few words about today's music, classical musical selections before I read some words associated with that. Good morning, everybody. 
It's a real pleasure and an honor to play this piece today. It's, I'm sure everyone's heard of it, Vivaldi's Four Seasons. Uh, Antonio Vivaldi lived in Venice about 300 years ago, and he was called Il Prete Rosso, the Red Priest, because he had flaming auburn hair, and he retired early from his priestly duties to focus on music and be head of an all-girls boarding school in Venice. And he wrote hundreds of pieces for his young students. And the Four Seasons are among the most famous. And it's said that he wrote them inspired by the seasons and to find a good way to inspire his students. So, and he also wrote sonnets that go along with this music. And Hugh is going to share those with us too. Thank you. So the sonnets that Vivaldi wrote for this first movement are very simple and short, but great images. Shivering, frozen mid the frosty snow in biting, stinging winds, running to and fro to stamp one's icy feet, teeth chattering in the bitter chill.
Jeff, thank you so much. As those of you who play music know, when you play with somebody, it actually doesn't lighten the load, but takes more work. So thank you for your preparation. Beautiful, icy music. Each Sunday we offer ourselves just a few minutes of quiet to take a deep breath and leave the rest of the world behind and get more fully present here. So I invite you to do that however you wish, but one way to help is to empty your hands, put what you have on the floor, sort of sit up straight in a way that allows you to breathe deeply into your lungs, relaxed, and we'll just have